podcast for marketers focused on finding and targeting their ideal customers at scale. I'm your host, Monique Ruiz. If you work in or with the entertainment industry as an advertiser or a marketer and are listening to this episode as it releases, I tip my hat to you because May is an extremely busy month for you. The word upfronts probably needs no explanation for you, but for those not in the know, traditionally in the entertainment industry, upfronts are an annual event where major TV networks get together to preview their programming for the upcoming season, hoping that advertisers will be enticed to buy commercial time during those shows. Where we get the word upfront is because an advertiser pays upfront to place their ads in these networks fall lineups. And while it's one thing to secure ad space, it's important that advertisers don't forget to measure the success of those campaigns to help us understand not only the various terminology used in this industry, like advanced TV, CTV, and OTT, but where these media channels should fit in an advertiser strategy and what's in store in the future, I've invited Jennifer Koromansky, VP of Measurement and Attribution here at Claritas, to join me. We've also invited one of our partners, Centriply, on to talk from the perspective of being a pure demand-side targeted TV platform for advertisers. Shelly from Centriply will join us a little later, but first, Jennifer, welcome to the Marketing Insider. Thanks, Monique. It's great to be here. I really appreciate the invite. Well, we're happy to have you. And you're newly joining us here at Claritas, and this is your first time on the podcast. So please just uh, give us a brief introduction of yourself and what your role entails. Sure. So when you were talking about the upfronts, I was working in the industry for many, many years. So I enjoyed uh, that fun time of getting involved in all that. So I've been in media marketing all my career, but I've moved into measurement a few years ago. And here at Claritas, I'm helping publishers, agencies, and brands measure their CTV campaigns all in one place so they can see attribution or attribution and lift. But the biggest important thing is that they can actually drive maximum exposure for all of their buys. Yep. The goal is to help them optimize for that effectiveness. Nice. I did just mention some terminology that's used in the TV world. So advanced TV, CTV, and OTT. What do these words slash abbreviations mean and what is the difference between them? Great question. So advanced TV is really an umbrella term and it refers to television content that evolves beyond traditional linear TV delivery models. So advanced TV includes OTT, which is over the top, connected TV, addressable TV, and addressable VOD, which is video on demand. Over the last couple of years, we've really seen the rise of OTT and CTV lead to this phenomenon known as cord cutting, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a growing trend of consumers really canceling their traditional cable and satellite subscriptions in favor of only using streaming or VOD services. CTV and OTT, they've they've been around for quite some time at this point, but why are we, Claritas, only, you can't see, but I'm doing air quotes right now, why are we only just now starting to talk more about them? Well, so we know that connected TV is CTV, right? And that's a device that connects to or is embedded in devices that you plug into. So it's a television that supports that video content and streaming. And then over the top is delivery of that TV and video content. So I always think of OTT as content and the connection is through CTV. The pandemic brought forth this explosive use of this medium of OTT. People needed more to watch than what was on linear like kids programming or, you know, more program of interest, baking, cooking, everyone got into baking bread during the, yeah. <laughs> the uh, pandemic. So it's really, um, you know, what did people want to watch and what was relevant at the time? Because because we're all stuck in the house. Mm-hmm. So the change in viewership also is big. Broadcast and cable, were, they were losing audiences these last couple of years. So they were pushed to develop more content or refine these audiences through some of the new content. So like Discovery Plus, Paramount Plus, Disney Plus, and Sling are a few examples of companies that decided to take their old content and make it new again. Also, I think a lot of people may have read about the new IAB report. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting that we're finding the dollar spend in the actual category is not on par with the viewership that's taking place on these platforms today. 18% of the spending is being funneled into CTV when we look at the total video spend of CTV and social and short form video or traditional linear TV, this year's upfront's gonna change that though 
because it's forecasted to grow 39% to $21.2 billion. Wow. Yep. And that's actually on top of 57% growth in 2021. Okay. So three out of four buyers are actually saying that it's going to be a must buy in their budgets this year. Yeah, we'll see if we can link that report. If you haven't seen it, if you're listening to this and you're like, whoa, I want to know more about that. That's interesting. I'm I'm about to throw a bunch of questions at you all at once. So stop me if I overwhelm you. (laughs) But where does this channel fit into an advertiser's marketing strategy? Is it a major or minimal investment? And is it easily accessible as an advertising channel for small businesses that likely have smaller budgets? Or is it reserved for larger companies that typically have larger budgets? Yes, that's a lot of questions. But <laughs> the, the, the key here is, is that it is what they call addressable. And we talked about that a little bit. So it's going to be a little higher cost or you know, no CPM, but this cost is really due to an opportunity to address those specific audiences and target more precisely. Mm-hmm. There's ways to include your OTT and CTV in, in less expensive ways through programmatic buying or even a less targeted approach. It truly comes down to what is needed to enhance your overall plans or what specific performance and budgetary goals do you have? Hmm. So a consumer package company might not need to target so specifically, but they need more mass reach. But other clients are going to need to have more specific performance goals. The medium is accessible. In fact, in a recent discussion with a publisher that I had, approximately 80% of their advertiser base was going to include some sort of streaming in their buys. Okay. So again, it really depends on that goal of the campaign and the opportunity to reach a specific, what I like to call intender audience mm-hmm. for your brand. The exciting part is whether you're local, regional, or national, there's a lot of options for you out there for you to experiment and learn from. It okay. is all about the specific goals. Right. So measurement and attribution are two very important components of what we kind of call a full circle marketing or marketing across the entire spectrum. What type of measurement solutions can advertisers expect to use or should they be using in this space? Yeah. So, you know, all of the publishers and the brands are working to get to that end game of measuring ad effectiveness as to sales or the other KPIs that brands set forth. And Mm -hmm. third party measurement is really key to bringing it all together. Our measurement solutions are around attributing the ad to a direct consumer action, and whether that be a web, a direction sale, or an app download, even a store visit or a credit card transaction. But this attribution then can be taken one step further as we have proprietary lift measurement that gives you that true client incremental performance metrics of that campaign, right? So whether you wanna optimize in flight or you want to look at that performance after the campaign, the attribution and lift measurement that is available is in near real time. Mm -hmm. Beyond that opportunity of measuring your performance, now you're understanding your audience. And when you understand the audience, how can you grow that audience? Can you actually then uh, see who responds to those messages? And so that's where Claritas comes in again with our deliver and our identify products. We have heard a lot over the past, I think it's probably been about two years, maybe three at this point, of the demise of cookies. What effect, if any, does the cookie demise have here? So the cookie demise is going to only help OTT okay. because the cookies are of no use in the space. Publishers and brands are using either first or third party data. That's the main offering. So those advertisers can specifically target more of their brand intenders. Like Claritas has, our identity graph provides this high confidence match. And that's really key as you're starting to look at these audiences and make sure that you have a connection with the IP address and without the cookies or the mobile IDs. Mm -hmm. We use a multi-node approach. So we bring together more highly confident data that's going to link a household IP address to an email. And that allows you to have that higher confidence of match. So then you definitely know who that consumer is. Right. So this is a unique advantage within that streaming environment, as I mentioned above, while many organizations have ID graphs, it's really important to understand the methodology and what is involved within the ID graph. All right, Jennifer, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up our conversation here. I know there's a ton more I can ask you, but we're going to save that for our Beyond the Episode blog, which you can find on our website, 
under the blog section of our Insights tab. So Jennifer, thanks again for joining me today. Thank you. Great to chat with you. All right. We'll be right back with Shelly from Centriply. I'm now joined by my next guest, Shelly Stansfield, founder and director of special ops at the advanced linear TV advertising agency, Centriply. Shelly, welcome to the Marketing Insider. Hi, Monique. Thanks for having me. We are very excited to have you. So before we start hopping into all of these questions that I have for you today, can you just give us a little bit of background on yourself, how Centriply came to be, and what advertisers typically come to you guys for? Certainly. Well, first, let me start with our name. Our name Centriply. It's pronounced like clarify, amplify, mm-hmm. simplify. Those are all things that we do. And we're an independent media agency that specializes in audience-driven advanced TV ad campaigns. So you can think of us as a search engine for TV audiences. Okay. The problem that we solve for other agencies and marketers, they want to use the same audiences that they use on their digital campaigns to reach the same people on TV. And they want fast response, they want impression-based proposals, and when the campaign's done, they want the results to be measured. And now it's all available through us at scale. You've been in the industry for a fair amount of time, but what are some of the biggest evolutions in the TV and media landscape that you've seen happen over the past, I'll say, five, 10 years? And kind of where do you see the evolution heading in the next five or 10 years? Well, 10 years is a long time in TV. (laughs) Actually, any media. I I think I'll focus on like just the last year or so. Yeah. Um, We've seen, and I was just talking about this uh, to some staff, we've seen a real comeback story in QR codes. Yes. It's it's like this really hot topic and everybody thought they were dead. Right. Who would have thought? With the pandemic forcing businesses to create like a a quick, easy connection to online materials and people's phones. You know, those codes are now like every day. It's an easy habit. We all know how to do it. It's not a big deal. And importantly, I mean, what I've seen is it's, it's cross generational. My mom can point her phone at something and get it. And my kid does it too. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it's really made a a very easy uh, connection, both to the phone, to the interest, and now to TV. I mean, we've been recommending to some political clients of ours, put the QR code when you're wanting donations and it sends them right to the landing page uh, and yeah. put, mm-hmm. put it in digital out of home display. So if somebody's walking through an airport and they've got time to kill, you know, I'll click on that. Right. Um, to see the ability to measure the action on a TV is something that we're also seeing big results for and mm-hmm. and more requests and and I can see it coming in the future is results measurement against TV budgets. You know, okay. often brands want to measure their sales against their ad budgets. I understand that. We can now create custom areas that match say a regional division of a retailer or a distributor. And because that's how they manage their own resources and business, we can set up these custom areas too for their TV campaigns. So we can do the buy, we can then report on it in the format that they need, even if it's not a traditional TV DMA. Um, And that's something that I see getting extremely important in the next year or two. Okay. My first guest, Jennifer, she was talking a lot about CTV and OTT, but can you tell us how does a network cable kind of differ from OTT in terms of marketing opportunities for TV? When you're not talking to someone who's really familiar with the business, they don't understand how many layers and delivery mechanisms for TV that there are. And the different TV offerings have very different strengths. So the similarities are that the network cable and the OTT, they both have a great amount of content. But from a brand perspective, there are definitely a few things to ask before considering each of them. The first thing is, do you truly have a national audience for a network cable campaign? 
Mm. You know, certain cable networks have really large audiences, tentpole events, and they can generate large amounts of impressions, you know, in a really short amount of time, like live sports and, and award shows and things. And then another question is, is there content on there that matches your audience interest? So do you have a home improvement product? Would it match well with HGTV? Or is it news related and should be on Fox? If there's a good tie in there, it makes all the sense in the world. Mm -hmm. But for things like CTV, we often ask our clients, do you have the audience data that can be used to find households? Because CTV can really handle that. And so can we, but they're very well known for it. And then for CTV, do you have time to build up frequency? You know, because it's such a fragmented delivery mechanism right. that it can take quite a bit of time because there's less inventory available. So our approach to audience-driven linear is to be that complementary layer. So we get added often to both network and CTV because we focus on extending the reach and then we go to those locations where national viewing could be weak. You want to beef up a CTV campaign using that same audience. And then we provide more scale and you get faster and more impactful messaging. And you're meeting your audience everywhere they're watching. That kind of segues me into my next question for you. I'll be honest, I don't personally know much about how retargeting campaigns uh, work in the TV landscape. Can you shed a little bit of light? Yeah. As a matter of fact, Monique, we're often used to fill holes uh, okay. and deliver impressions to cover other underperforming channels. Okay. Uh, you know, especially at the end of a quarter, you know, agencies are, are, bound by contract to deliver right. a certain amount of impressions. Mm -hmm. So we work with our partners and our buyers don't need to constantly avail different markets since we're in markets all over the country all the time. We have that at our fingertips, you know, and I'm not recommending being reactive all the time. Um, it's not really what I would consider a, a good strategy. And we can absorb budgets quickly and focus on areas, locations, regions. We can go zips, states, counties, because we're an independent company that tracks, and we're the only one, that tracks all 3,000 cable systems across the U.S. Wow. Their coverage, their insertion capabilities, and we're not selling their inventory. We don't have inventory deals, so it gives us a ton of flexibility. And we're known for, for our re reliability. Mm -hmm. So if they need to retarget and re-address uh, different um, areas, our buyers have options and they know where they can get more impressions and where media owners are sold out. Um, and then we post or verify um, what's happening in our TV campaigns every week. So we don't set it and forget it. There are no surprises. We confirm what we're doing all along the way. And right. I, we don't think it's harder, but there may be more maybe phone calls and talking to real people than a digital campaign manager is used to. You know, there's still TV sales teams um, and we do interact with a fair amount of people. So lots of what we do is animated. I mean, there's plenty of platform technology sorting through 70,000 lines of inventory. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a snap and we do it every day. All right. So, Shelly, I think I'm looking at the clock here and we're kind of coming up on the end of our time. But I have had a great time speaking with you today. So we really do appreciate you joining us on the podcast for this month's episode. Well, thanks for having me, Monique. This has been okay. delightful. I can talk about this stuff all day. <laughs> you know, we, we view technology and audience data and TV, you know, as a way to create business opportunities. And right. we're TV nerds that way. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're not out here just to solve what's not working. Um, and honestly, the best part is, ta-da, you know, we're already doing things that yeah. most advertisers haven't even dreamed can be done. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, before I do actually let you go, can you just let our listeners know what's next for Centriply and then how can they connect with you guys in case they are interested in learning more? We are in the midst of combining spot broadcast and cable TV and uh, CTV all in one big 
platform. It's kind of a, a monster job. Um, but the, the thing that really is the foundation of that is your custom audiences and how we can get privacy compliant mm -hmm. information about households uh, and be able to coordinate the whole thing together. And, you know, we're transforming how traditional TV advertising is bought and sold. I mean, it doesn't require any extra investment for anyone easily and in, integrates into their existing workflows. And, you know, for both the buyer and the seller, it maximizes the value of their existing inventory. And now with Claritas, we provide ID level audience planning and outcome measurement. Uh, it's, it's a win for everybody. Right. Um, and if people would like to get in touch with us, uh, we're on LinkedIn. I don't know. Can I even give you a QR code? To <laughs> you know what? Why not? <laughs> okay. So just scan the QR code on your screen and check our website at centriply.com. And thanks so much for having me. It's been a delight. Well, folks, that is all the time we have for today. So I do want to, again, thank my two guests for joining me. And thank you to those of you listening at home or on the go. If you've not already, please take a moment to follow The Marketing Insider so you never miss an episode. Rate us five stars on your podcast app of choice. Our favorite, of course, being Spotify. And share us with a friend or colleague so we can keep the conversation going. And with that, we'll see you next time with a brand new episode. Bye now. Bye.